Welcome back, everybody. G5 Higher Purpose Gaming, your host, Hotel Charlie Hill here. I think I just pressed my mouse on a setting. And yeah, that sucks on OBS because there's no, there's no like control Z undo feature. So you don't know, like, yeah, you can never go back. So whatever. Anyways, jumping back into some reading of comic books tonight. Hidden some Aliens by uh, Dark Horse Comics from 1988. So I think this might actually be some sort of a spinoff from the actual Aliens movie. I don't know. I I remember seeing a couple of these issues. It's a series of six, but I don't remember exactly. So yeah, last night we did, or two nights ago, I think, we did Alien, the illustrated story after the original movie by uh, Ridley Scott. And now we're going to be doing... Aliens, which might actually be a rendition of James Cameron's film, so should be pretty cool. I just want to check some real quick. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, yeah, so what I accidentally pressed was the volume for my intro video because on the slider bar, anywhere you click, the slider moves there. So if you click an empty space, the slider goes to it rather than having to click the slider and move the tab back and forth. So I just had my mouse say icon in the wrong place and I pressed the button and it uh, changed the volume. So yeah. Anyways, without further ado... Oh, that's cool. You guys didn't need to see that. As you can see, I'm streaming uh, through Restream. So I've got YouTube, Vaughn Live, Instagram, Periscope. It's probably not working. They have like a two um, megabit uh, cap and I'm streaming at like well over that. So, yep. I'm streaming at about 6,000 megabits, 6,200 right now. Steam. Uh, pfft, never works. I don't, I, I don't care really. Twitch, Mixer, Smashcast. That's probably not working. D Live just jumped on that. Now Facebook too. So, yeah. All right, here we go. Aliens. You want to talk about last night? Why? It won't make any difference. Give me a try. It started when my friend Carly found an old disc about camping. You know, the real stuff, about the real land. The disc talked about the camping fire and sing-around songs. We borrowed a crawler and drove out to one of the remote generator buildings. We couldn't light a fire, but we plugged a crawler heater into one of the battery outlets and got close to keep warm. I'm freezing. Whose idea was this? Yours, power drain. I remember thinking how much I liked being there, away from the colony and the machines. Just me and my friends. What else did they do on the disc, Carly? They burned rations over a fire, which seemed kind of dumb. And sometimes they, sometimes they told scary s stories. Scary stories. Carly went first. It was something about vampires and witches and monsters. I knew it was straight out of the disc library, but it didn't matter with the wind and the rain and the hum of the heater. It was as scary as any video. And then he drank all of her blood. Gosh, I hate vampires. Shh. About then the heater stopped working. Maybe it was a short, maybe, maybe it was a short. Everything turned cold and blue and I started to shiver. Your turn, Newt. What's the scariest thing you ever saw? Okay, so of course Newt is the uh, blonde girl from the Aliens film, so this is a prequel of sorts. Is this working? No one's watching. How's no one watching this? This is incredible. No, I want to go back. Actually, she had a British accent. No, I want to go back. It was your idea, Newt. Don't chicken out now. I knew if I didn't tell, they'd never go back. Okay, so I guess this is being told from her perspective. Okay, okay. I knew a story about a real scary witch and... A witch? Don't be stupid. You know something scarier than that? Tell us. P please, can't we go back? Tell it. 
I started to get mad at them picking on me like that. All I wanted to do was go home. I decided to tell them the scariest story I knew. There are these things that live in space. They live to feed and to hate better. Oh, here we go again with some of the bad story writing. You know, there's... There's no way this girl is going to... This, like, seven-year-old girl is going to make up a story that's basically uh, the events of her life that are going to unfold. But anyways. Yeah, oh my gosh. They have acid for blood and skin as hot as hull steel. You don't see them until they're on top of you. And then all you see are the teeth glittering like sparks as they snap. Maybe they're from another world. Or maybe they just exist in the black hell of space, feeding on anything they find. It doesn't matter. I, I don't feel so good. Nothing matters but those teeth snapping shut on bone and brain, tearing, cutting, crushing. But it doesn't end in death. They use what's left for breeding, burrowing into the tissue, spreading like cancer until the parasite is whole, until the hate can build again and again. And, Meg, what's wrong? Something is... Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, God, no! I don't feel ill. Not again! Not again! Oh, okay. It was all just a psychiatric dream. All right. I guess that's when you found me in the hall screaming, Newt, wake up! You're dreaming! If you're feeling better, I'll loosen the straps. You can do anything you want. It won't stop the dreams. Nothing can stop the dreams. Oh, uh, okay. So this is Newt. She's growing up now. She's a teen, whatever. Alien 3 is not taking place, so Newt is not dead in an escape pod along with Hicks, which was just so freaking sad and unnecessary. Nothing can stop the dreams. They're all around us, man! They've got Drake and Vasquez pinned in the generator station. Hicks, knock it off. Stick together and we'll get through this. Me and Frost, you'll take the front. Hudson, lay down some kick-ass cover. The rest of you, ease around back. We're gonna help flank these mothers. Help flank these mothers. Crow! Honey, I'm gonna have the private take you to the... Don't leave me. It's gonna be fine. I'll be back. <laughs> die, die, die! That was not a very good sound effect for the uh, pulse rifle. I'm sorry. I, uh, I can't even think of what they sounded like. Oh, yeah, it was like this weird screeching sound. <laughs> Anyways. We get out of this, Hicks, and I'm buying you a drink. When we get out of this, you're buying me the whole dang refinery. Okay, on my count. One, two, three. <laughs> Frost, Vasquez, drink. They're both dead. Something inside of them. Frost? Dietrich! Hudson, give me a fix on your position. There's something damn straight, damn strange in. Help me, Hicks. Don't leave me. No. No. Oh, so here's Hicks having the dreams, too. Hicks, front and center. I should get my piece of paper out so I can do my digitized voices. Hicks, front and center. Give it a rest, Perkins. I've still got 24 hours to serve on the D&D charges. You wash, pal. You wish, pal. Much as I'd like to slam you back for another cycle, your high-ranking friends have other plans. It's about time. I'm not safe in here with him. I don't have any high-ranking friends. He's sick, man. You don't know what he's got inside him. Sounds like you don't have any friends, period. Watch the disc and report to Colonel Stevens at 0800. Heck, maybe you could even try and look like a soldier. I'll try if you'll try. I knew it was a bad sign when Perkins actually opened the cell. I learned a long time ago, nobody goes out on a limb unless they want something. Somebody must have wanted me bad. They still call them the Coast Guard, even though the coast they're guarding is three or four hundred miles out in space. 
It was a lot cheaper to abandon a ship than retrofit and refuel, especially the old-style nuclear jobs. A lot of the industrials just dumped them in decaying orbit, waiting for gravity and atmospheric burn-up to solve their problem. Oh, you know what I think's wrong? I think my mic's turned up too high. That's why it's compressing so much. Because it's, it's hitting the top end. Okay, so this is probably good right here, I guess. Well, we'll see. Well, this will be the test. Hopefully, anyways. That worked until one of the flamers crashed half intact near a coffee plantation on the island of Hawaii. The radiation killed the indigenous population, made it darn near impossible to find a good cup of Kona. So now the Coast Guard tags the floaters and blasts them before they can decay into the atmosphere. Keeps the world safe and gives the guard boys something to do between poker games. Probe away. See that, Lyle? The door's bulging out like somebody was trying to blow it from the inside. It's crazy. That's a dry dock port. Open that in space and it's a bye bye atmosphere. 1532.10. So that's 3.30, basically, p.m., Earth time. Yeah, and the pilot's pod is gone, too. Three, two, one, kapow. Good shot. Take her in. Oh, jeez. Stupid bugger was even wearing a pressure suit like he was committing suicide. Hurry it up. This thing's starting to heat up. Is that blood? I think that's blood, man. I've seen this before. It's like mega claustrophobia or something. One guy snaps and takes the rest with him. Finally got a read on the vessel. Standard type, five nuke engines, old style transmitter. Did a lot of deep space time. Total bucket. No wonder they ditched it. Wait a minute, I'm getting something on the motion detector. Look at those holes. What the heck does that? Three meters in closing. We don't have time for mysteries. Hole temperature's up another 50 degrees. It's going to start flaring any second. Back off. Back off. It's just a darn cargo carrier, man. We must have jolted it when we burned the airlock. Look, the manual says check for salvage. I don't see any salvage. Okay, so plant the darn nukes and dust the darn thing. Wait a minute. I'm picking up something else right on top of the probe. The whole ship's probably crawling with autom automates. Come on, move it. Did we get a complete history from the onboard? I think command's gonna want to see some hard copy on this tub. I pulled everything in the queue. Now that better do it, because as they say, down south, hasta la vista. Probe 20 meters in closing. Darn, these controls are sluggish. Yeah, that's why we still have jobs. Compensate, boy, compensate. 10 meters in close, too fast. Slow it down for cripes sakes. I'm trying. Something's inhibiting the left retro. Airlock. Doors open. I'm kicking some tech ass if they mess with the retro. Says, what in the heck? It's impossible. Thin air. Something was on the retro, I, I take it. That's total vacuum. And it's alive. This is probe ship Dutton. We have pulled something in from maybe some kind of parasite or... <sighs> That's no parasite. Oh my gosh. It's gonna... <sighs> oh my gosh. I knew it was only a matter of time before it happened. That's why the Marines never kicked me out of the Corps. They knew it too. I saw a guy tear his suit once. He had time for one scream and his blood began to boil. Ugh. That's what happens in the vacuum of space, just so you know. In the vacuum, uh, water boils. In, in, in total vacuum. That's not what you see in the movies. All things considered, those boys on the Coast Guard ship were lucky. Probe ships weren't designed to withstand a hull breach. The alien was clever, but not that clever. <laughs> ship imploded, taking the alien son of a gun with it. But proof of the one meant there were more. I just got to check something here real quick. Test. How we doing? We are five by five everywhere. There it is. Restream chat. 
Everything's on, just no one's home. <laughs> Does anybody love me? I'm an Instagram ho. I need affirmation. Why is no one watching me? Ship terminated. No survivors. What was the old phrase? Where there's smoke, there's fire? Yeah, fires of hell. It's crazy in the comics just how often they're... Um, like inter uh what's their in, in intercepting aliens like it's just so funny because i mean like you know obviously without an alien you don't have a story so you gotta have constant contact with aliens whereas in the movies it's like the rarest thing they come across them once in a blue moon you're late excerpts from the book the evolution of television by emmett webster dh press 2057 Commercial television, as it was known in the 1980s and 90s, disappeared with the application of superconductive transmission technology to the then-existent cable television systems. Get off my back, Sylvaye. You're lucky I'm here at all. Between this crap and my day job, it's lucky I find time to sleep. The cause is far more important than your sleep. Yeah? That's what they all say. With systems offering 500, then 1,000, and eventually 5,000 channels, it became economically infeasible for advertisers to support mainstream dramatic programming. Soon, instead of hundreds of thousands of viewers, audience shares were calculated in the tens. Mm. Sounds like stream, or er, sounds like streaming. Jeez, this thing's an antique. It must weigh two or three pounds. Be careful. It took months to locate. With the dissolution of the FCC, cable access was open to all persuasions. In a resurgence similar to that seen during the mid-1980s, religious programming became a television staple, outnumbering non-doctrinal programs nearly 100 to 1. I'll set it on a medium shot. You in the backdrop? Pretty dull stuff compared to the sound massage and subliminals your competition's been using. The truth of my message will shine like a beacon. The others are pretenders. I preach the gospel of... I highly doubt it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The true Messiah. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, you had to go there. It's your money. Get ready. I should have you. I should have you on in a couple of minutes. With so many programs to choose from, viewer perceptions changed. Much as the fast cut visual styles of the 90s were defined by five then two second commercials. <laughs> That's what they're doing now on YouTube. Oh my gosh. The style of mid-century programming was changed with the introduction of the retinal switch or eye box. I know there are others with the vision. Others who have heard the call these past few months. The eye box was designed to detect minute changes in the capillaries of the retina, initiating random channel changes based on involuntary blood pressure fluctuations. To hold audiences, programmers were forced to devise new styles of programming that would not trip the eye box switcher. Oh wow, that's like today's day and age where we have such short attention spans. It's okay, Doc. I hooked up a guy last week who said the Messiah was playing third base for the Osaka Pistons. Doesn't matter to me. But if that thing's God, give me that old time religion. Ugh. I suppose it's only natural for mankind to go in this direction uh, if we found aliens, because already mankind is looking to the stars for a savior because they don't want to admit it's Jesus. Or rather, they can't admit. Hi, Newt. Check out Dee Dee. She's averaging 50 switches a hit. Great. Can't even walk straight. Hey. Oh, okay. I want you to join our... <sniffs> Dr. Hill's got you blued again, doesn't he? That's a treatment, isn't it? Bad dreams? Sedatives. Can't eat? Sedatives. Talk out of turn? Sedatives. Compassion and love and... You have to be strong, dude. In a couple of months, you'll get your hearing and I'll never make it. Everything's slipping away. Memory control. Can't even walk. And I just happen to look like Sigourney Weaver's character. Get your attention. Oh, look. These are backward sixes. Gross. Are the new world of... Oh, look, now it's 999. These are, uh, this is, these are occult symbols, by the way, guys. Uh, and that's why 69 is also an occult symbol. 
Not that there's anything wrong with 69 with your wife. Uh, it's just that, yeah, that's, that's where the number itself uh, comes from, from the idea of as above, so below. Excuse me, I'm trying to crack my back. The doctors can't figure me out. I didn't do anything. I just don't get along. Is that crazy? No, they're gonna hear. I didn't ask to be born out there. Nobody warned me about the risks. No, please. The Church of Immaculate Incubation. <gasps> you can't get it out of me with drugs. I saw them tear my mother apart like a doll. And they're still out there. That would definitely drive you crazy. Seeks the ultimate communion with the true. Freeze it. There. What was that old slogan? The Marines want a few good men? I really believed that kind of crap when I signed on. That was before Acheron, before I came home. I hadn't been off base in years. It didn't take long to remember why. Lance Corporal Hicks to see Colonel Stevens. Oh, Lance Corporal Hicks to see Cor uh, Colonel Stevens. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, they're, they're expecting you. I'd heard about Stevens, special projects man. He had zip combat experience, but fancied himself a real warrior. Easy to do in peacetime. Corporal Hex, uh, I'm glad you could make it down, at ease. He kept his hands behind his back, afraid to touch me. Or maybe he's holding a pistol. <clears throat> I take it you've seen the disc on the Dutton? Yes, sir. Then you know. I understand you have some experience in these matters. Doctor, please, let me handle the... Well, is it true? Yes, sir. You could say that. Oh my gosh, it looks like his uh, acid burn on his face got even worse from the movie. I was part of a detachment sent to investigate loss of contact with a terraformer colony on the planet Asheron. I thought it was LV-246, so maybe it was, I guess they called it Asheron, I don't know. Command suspected an alien presence was involved. Hey, how's it going, homie? Just reading some Aliens. It's actually uh, kind of like a comic sequel to the James Cameron film, so it's pretty awesome. <laughs> totally different than Alien 3, obviously, because uh, this, this comic came out uh, a couple years after the film and years before 1991's Alien 3. I think it was 91. The colonel had been ransacked. We found a single survivor, a young girl named Newt. The rest of the colonists were dead. Before the squad could affect dust off, we were forced to engage the alien enemy in close quarters. Other than myself, a civilian named Ripley and the young girl, no one from the mission survived. Survival is such a relative term, Corporal Hicks. I've been reading your file. You had a sterling record prior to the Asheron mission. Since your release from medical, this seems to have changed. Sir, I wasn't aware that my record was the subject of this discussion. Colonel, please, may I have a few moments with the corporal? Alone? Much better. I feel stifled by military ignorance, don't you? Look, whatever your name is, you, won't, you want to talk about those alien buggers? Fine. But I don't see how my record is pertinent to... My name is Arona, and it's entirely pertinent. Perhaps a review is in order. In the course of your mission to Asheron, you suffered severe acid burns, deep and quite disfiguring. Gah! This is in the elevator. Once back on Earth, you spent several months in quarantine waiting to be cleared into the general populace. There was considerable concern over the infectious nature of the alien spore. According to hospital reports, you didn't have a single visitor during this entire period. When you were finally reinstated to active duty, there, seems, there seemed to have been problems in readjusting to military life. Former comrades fearfully you might somehow be infectious from the alien blood avoided contact. Your later record is painfully repetitive, drunk and disorderly, brawling, public intoxication, really quite disappointing. Oh god, no! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! I'm a geneticist, Corporal, but it doesn't require psychologists to see a pattern in this self-destructive behavior. All of it stemming from the Asheron mission. What the heck do you want from me? Before those Coast Guard fools destroyed themselves, they managed to transmit the data banks from the derelict to our ground station. We have the entire inboard history, including course trajectories. Click. You seek redemption. I seek specimens. Wow, cool. Oh my gosh!
On to the next issue, Aliens 2 of 6. <sighs> Got a knife through a picture into the dashboard of my ship because I'm going for revenge. Oh, face hugger. I'm blind. Get it off. Jeez, jeez, I can't breathe. You're my captain, brave little captain. So scared, pain, can't see. Oh, my back. You gotta forgive me. My back hurts so much. There we go. That's not better, but anyways. Fly, fly away, my brave little captain. Uh, I remember that song. My mother used to sing it when I was small. Oh, I guess that was supposed to be sung. Fly, fly away, my brave little captain. Pain's going away. Gosh, I feel warm now. Oh, because I'm a baby? What the heck? Why does it look like the inside of an alien hive rather than a uterus? I'm not scared anymore. I don't have to be. She's going to take care of me. Oh, this must be Ripley. Okay. Or I mean, oh, sorry, Newt. It's so warm. I'm part of something new and better. I keep remembering my mother. Oh, maybe it's Hicks. Oh, you spend your life trying to forget the warmth of the womb, but the world's so empty, so cold. Actually, no, you don't remember the womb. That's idiocy. I see it so clearly now. I was hungry for the warmth again, for that almost preternatural togetherness. We pretend with our bodies, but it isn't the same. It can't be the same. People don't have sex because they want to be inside a womb. This is idiotic. Career job, honor, country, all farce. What does it all mean? Reality is the vast loneliness of our solitary, cold existence. I'm blind, but I finally see. Oh, maybe it's Newt. I'm staring at the ceiling, tranked again, throw it in. I think, the one that makes you feel like you're suffocating. I relived the past again and again. I was born on a terraformer transport in deep space. My parents named me Rebecca, but everyone called me Newt. Our new home was a desolate rock christened Asheron. My parents had volunteered for the mission in the romantic spirit of the old Earth pioneers, but there was little romance on that cruel world. The wind and the cold meant nothing to the aliens. They waited dormant until the time was right. I was the only survivor. I was found by a marine rescue team and returned to Earth. The doctors lost interest in me when I didn't respond to their treatments. I'm staring at the ceiling. There's a circular light in the center, humming softly. Cracks spread across the plaster like wrinkles on an old man's face. No, like the wrinkles on my face. What is she looking at? Oh, she thinks she's floating. Some see space as a panacea. Uncounted worlds with untold rich- Ah! Uncounted worlds with untold riches. They look to the heavens and see the joy of opportunity. I look into space and see the cold void of hell. My only escape. Hicks! Don't leave me! Hicks! Don't leave me! I'm not leaving, darling. I've left. Cripes, that was stupid. What the heck was wrong with me? I never needed anybody before. Oh, okay, so maybe that was him at first. Nice hair. Must have been the booze talking. <laughs> the Marines, the lucky few. I was one of the lucky few. Go Marines. By God. I keep remembering Asheron, Drake, Vasquez, even that ass Hudson. They were okay. Okay, heck, they were buddies. I let them all die. I had to stay clear, keep the focus. I've been waiting for my chance to get those alien b buggers ever since I came back. I couldn't screw up now. Couldn't complicate it. Sorry, Newt. I go. You stay. I understand you think Hicks may be a problem. Maybe. Heck, the man's been bucking for a psych discharge ever since he came back from Asheron. Looks like you've got a problem, Stevens. Command sold on the guy. Yeah, I think he's the big tough monster killer. 
Crew killer's more like it. It's not like the Asheron mission was a success. Heck, the only survivors were a kid, a civilian named Ripley and Hicks. The kid's a brain case and Ripley, well, you know what became of her. No, we don't. Which means Hicks is the only experienced hand ca available. Command's moved him in with the grunts and he's supervising loading operations. I don't need his kind of experience. Come on, Bill. You've still got some pull over at... What the heck is this, Stevens? You don't like Hicks? Cross him off your party list. But he's got the experience and he's got the mission. Understood? Yes, sir. Understood. Soldier, what are those crates? Plasma rifle, sir. 35 chargers and 25,000 packs per Corporal Hicks request. Have, have Corporal Hicks meet me in the sky office now. Just who in the heck authorized plasma weapons, Corporal? I was told to prepare the ship, sir. Blasters are notoriously unstable and grossly destructive. We're collecting specimens, not pieces. Perhaps your previous experience has distorted your judgment. First time you face off with one of those things, you'll wish you had something stronger. Maybe command's impressed with you, but I'm not. I won't jeopardize the mission or the ship with those blasters. Take them off. It's very interesting. Uh, in the last episode, this guy was all about Hicks, but now he's like... totally against him. Very strange. Need a drink. Any other news on that merger proposal we sent over with Massey? I thought I told you they went for it. Gotcha. Went for it. Yeah, lower price per share, too. I guess Massey convinced them our offer was good business. Oh, they were playing a game. Good match. Yeah, I almost worked up a sweat. Listen, Ted, I want to talk to you about the biowarfare project. Any movement from the government? Oh, you know those government guys. Hush, hush, big secret. They want to grab the life form and patent for themselves. Can't have that. Alien life forms are the next step in competitive biological weaponry. We've already got interest from Canada, Japan, Ireland, and the third world's going ape. There's no way. What's up, Chris? Buffering hard for me. Great to see a comic site. Yeah, you bet, man. I mean, I stream games too, but, uh, you know, here, let me just, uh, let me check DLive. I guess, I, you know, I guess I can't really tell unless I listen to it, but, but I'm not going to do that. Sorry, man. Yeah, cool. Enjoy. This is uh, the Never Happened sequel of the James Cameron film Aliens before Alien 3, so it's completely different. So there'll be a lot of surprises. Uh, oh, shoot. Sorry about that. I forgot that it wouldn't be muted. I want someone special to look after our interests. Massey did a good job on the merger. Tell me about him. Pat, coffee will be ready in a minute. Daddy, why do they call it the Wall Street Journal? MBA from Harvard, doctorate in law from Cornell. He could have had his pick of the big two companies. Honey, don't, don't be late. Instead, he enlisted in the Marines, for Christ's sakes. Silver Star for bravery during the oil war? Couple hundred confirmed kills. Holy smokes. He didn't enlist out of the patriotism. He liked it. Good morning, Mr. Massey! He had more decorations than a Christmas tree. Then suddenly he was a court marshaler. Or then he, suddenly he was court marshaled. Seems he tried to kill his commanding officer for failing to order his squad, or his squad to attack a civilian encampment. We paid off the military tribunal and hired him immediately. It's rare when you find a man who loves his work. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just going to keep talking for a second as I check DLive one more time. I'm curious about how this... What the heck, man? This is so annoying. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, 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 talk. Oh, gosh. 
D Live is buffering hard. I think maybe just D does D Live just suck? Test, 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 Check, check, check if I talk, if I talk louder. If I talk louder, does it cause the compression? Check, check, check. What if I talk quiet? Does it, is it better that way? Is there no compression? Check, check, check. How about right now? Test, 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 test. Is that better? Okay, we're going to talk for a little bit and we'll see what happens. No, that's not changing anything. I don't know, man. Frig, I hate this. My mic used to be so beautiful. It was like one of the most beautiful mics on the internet. Now, it pops like crazy. Friggin' gay. Back to the comic. Hopefully, it's not that bad. The darkness is a blanket. Something drips like sweat, all warm and sticky. Feels good. Oh my gosh. Fly, fly away, my brave little captain. We were one. Gosh, I loved you. Then I was torn from you, forced into this naked existence, so alone and cold. I never thought I'd feel that love again. My true mother is part of me, I can feel her sliding wet in my throat, feeling my lungs and my stomach, wrapping her fingers inside. So warm. So warm. What the heck? The writing in this is just bizarro. <sighs> yep. I mean, I know she's talking about the Mother Queen, but it's, it sounds eroticized, if you ask me, which is bizarre because we're talking about a freaking alien creature, essentially an animal. Her teeth glitter like the stars. Oh, she is impossibly beautiful. She loves me more than you ever could. Oh my gosh. She's lost her mind. Easily, try to circle by- Oh wait, hold on a second. Let's, uh, let's get the static effect going. Easily, try to circle behind the bunker and find a service port. We might be able to blast through it. Roger that, cover me. I sure the aft plate. I'm going in on three. Copy. One, two. <laughs> yeah, dead on, buddy. We must have cut the main line. <laughs> yeah, dead on, buddy. Ah. Dang, Corporal Hicks. Get your butt out of the mud before you short the whole suit. Butler and Eastley were stupid. You don't assume anything in combat. Yeah, they took out the remotes and the targeting system, and they're still dead. Clear to you, Blake? A real learning experience. I can see you're moved. In honor of Butler's death, we're going to spend the rest of the day on the course. Maybe some of this will sink in. Oh, jeez. Thanks a lot, Butler. Okay, yeah, so these guys are doing training, I guess. I was impressed. Everyone on the squad was top-rated in ordnance blinders. Oh, ordnance. Blinders, projectors, low-level neutron stuff, and all the conventionals. Doc Arona had put some thought into this. Come on, Blake, get it up and over. They'd been working as a unit since inception. Just over a year. It showed. <laughs> Funny how much they're reminding me of the Ashron team. Move it! I kept thinking about Ashron, remembering what it was like to be part of a team, to have friends who would die for you. Friends who... No, 
Forget Asheron. My friends were dead. Remember what happened after the pain, the loneliness? This wasn't about duty, honor, loyalty. This was for me and no one else. Thank you, officer. Please have a seat, Rebecca. My name's Newt. We've been discussing your problem, Rebecca. Uh, Newt. Dr. Bannon feels surgery is really our only alternative. Since you're a minor with no next of kin, we really don't need anyone's permission to go ahead, but I think it's important you understand why. Uh, I'll be good. I'll try harder and... We've been through this before, Rebecca. Trying isn't good enough anymore. You have forced us to take drastic measures. It's really a minor operation. We target the specific areas in the brain responsible for your problems and use a laser scalpel to sever the... burn the tissue. We won't feel a thing really quite painless ever again. Oh, heck. Oh, why is this popping? Why is this popping? Why is this popping? Why is this popping? <sighs> Less than 12 hours to lift off. I told Stevens I had some last minute business off base. Oh, it must be Hicks going to visit Newt. He wasn't happy, but was he going to, what, what, what was he going to do? Fire me? Twelve more hours and I, and I would have been in space. I never should have signed into the security mainframe. Accessing the institution's patient files was a piece of cake. I guess I was curious. Hey! Hey! You have to... You have to pass the retinal and VC scan before... Sorry, tight schedule. Grr! Why'd I see her in the first place? Maybe I thought she'd understand. Maybe I just wanted someone here to remember me when it was over. Jeez, I don't know. Be right back. I gotta turn off my um, thermostat so that the fan turns off. The heater. Yes, that's right, guys. The links I go for to for my stream, the links I go to for my stream, turning off my heat, freezing to death in here. No, really, my computers will definitely heat this room up enough. There was a time when living and dying meant something to me. Call security, call. See my face? Scary, isn't it? Where's Rebecca? Room 4017. But you. Oh, and you can forget about outside security. I disconnected the downlink about an hour ago. My old squad, Hudson, Vasquez, and the rest, faced hell itself to rescue a scared little girl. Now they wanted to destroy her. Jeez, my friends died to save her. <laughs> Knew it was the only thing left of them. <laughs> nice try, quick draw. Drop your socks, kid. We're going for a ride. Newt's room was on the 40th floor of the medical high-rise. Even with the automatic security systems blinked, they'd have the ground exits covered by now. Darn you, kid. Oh, darn kid, you look like crap. Look who's talking. <coughs> what are you doing? A little remodeling. Marine style. Keep your head down. We're going eight. Hold tight! The wall... The wall blew out from the force of the explosion, and we went along with it. Nice view. The jet rescue technology had been developed after the World Trade Center smoked in 24. Oh my gosh, that's so uncanny. The World Trade Center went down in 2001. I'd borrowed the ship and the handheld controller from civilian operations. The ship had been designed for high-rise fire rescue. 
but I remember what Sergeant Apone used to say, Marines don't quit, they adapt. By the time they traced us back to base, it would be too late. One of the joys of taking a suicide mission, I suppose, reprimands and court-martials lose their sting. I flipped off the remote and we were mocked to before the last piece of plaster hit the ground, or hit ground level. For years, the general public had been fed this image of Marines as intellectual warriors, college diploma in one hand, M90 rapid fire in the other. I guess it's more comforting to imagine the national defense system in the hands of a, st a stiff-eyed, emotionless mar ma uh, is that marionette than some scared teenager with a skin problem. Corporal Hicks, is there something wrong? Yeah, the Dodgers are still in Los Angeles. Hey, you son. After a while, the Marines themselves bought the myth. Big mistake. Soldiers have the same wants and desires as everyone else. Sometimes they do things not because it's right or wrong, but because they must. For instance, nobody expects a Marine corporal to smuggle an unauthorized passenger aboard a top security military flight. We're going back, aren't we? We're really going back. Maybe that's why it was so darn easy. Stevens was going to be trouble. Pulling those plasma weapons to teach me a lesson in military protocol was stupid. Wait until he finds Newt tucked away in the aft compartment. Still, I felt sorry for him, just like I felt sorry for the grunts. I was taking them into my war, and they didn't even know it. The force of the liftoff crushed any last doubts. I was back in space, and nothing was going to stop me. Great show. I haven't heard industrial noise like that since college. We deserve a little wreck time. It's been hell and a half since we started planning the intercept mission. By now everything looks good, but I'm still a little worried about that last minute business with Massey. It was a darn stupid mistake. Apparently one of the communications people sent Massey some classified mail through an unclassified channel. Fortunately, Massey's son accessed the material. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Very careless. Information sketchy at this point, but Massey's wife appears to have confronted him about the document. Bat, we just saw this horrible thing on the, on the read screen. Take it easy, Mr. Massey. We'll be done soon. Regulations are quite clear on procedure in cases like this, but you must admit it was an unusual situation. He'd been married close to six years. He took pains to make it look like a robbery gone bad. The police didn't suspect a thing. Oh my gosh, what a psychopath. Killed his own family because they'd seen classified information and he didn't want them to get and he didn't want it to get out. Under the circumstances, Massey performed admirably. I had the psych boys do a workup on him right before liftoff, and he registered well with intolerable limits. I wonder how it feels, being a sociopath, I mean. Yeah, there you go. I would imagine it's quite liberating. Oh, gosh, how disgusting. There's no liberation in being able to uh, do awful things and not feel it, or to sin and not feel it, especially because you can't, uh, you can't repent, which means damnation, and that is not liberation at all. Eyes only data lock. Bionational inter internal memorandum. Operation outreach. <sighs> Progress report. The government vessel Benedict launched on schedule four five fifty four. I should have told that that Chris guy that um, should just watch it on Twitch or something. See if it's better. First in command, Colonel Stevens. Second in command, Corporal Hicks. Our chase ship KO one four launched in pursuit immediately thereafter. Captain by Bionational Executive Assistant, Assistant Patrick Massey. The government is seeking to retrieve the specimens of an alien life form for its weapons development program. If they are successful, this could seriously impact Bionational's claim of sole patent right on the new life form technology. Okay, so sounds like Bionational has shipped off their own mercenary to try and get... Uh, what's up, Mr. Pixel? How's it going? Hey, man, is my uh, audio popping and crackling like crazy? Hopefully not. Um, 
And yes, I've added uh, comic reading to my repertoire because I have like a thousand digital comics I want to delete, but I don't want to do it without actually having read them. The KO-14's mission is twofold. First, to follow the Benedict to the alien homeworld and gather biological data on the life form. Second, to inhibit the Benedict's crew from retrieving a viable test subject. Captain Massey has been given carte blanche toward this end. It's popping and you should change the category to just talking from PUBG. Friggin' stupid. I already changed it. Oh my god, I hate restream sometimes. Piece of trash. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Mixer. I, oh, I changed all of this before I started my goddamn stream. Frickin' piece of garbage. It's popping. You know, yeah, I don't know why it's popping, man. I never had, I never had mic problems like this before. And since I moved everything into my new, um, into my computer room, um, I get this popping. It's so bad. And some days it's really bad. So I just feel like just smashing everything, to be honest, because I, I don't know how to fix it. I mean, I spent months getting everything prepared in the, in the uh, beginning. I don't, I don't want to spend months doing it again. Maybe I'll change over to voice meter or voice meter banana or whatever rather than Ableton. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Ableton, like, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's doing it. Well, maybe this will be better. Is this better or is this worse? Is it popping more or popping less? Test, test, test. Check, check, check. Do, 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 do. It's got something to do with compression, I'm sure, because it's like got too much information and it's trying to compress the, uh, compress the information or something, which is why it starts to pop. You let me know if that's better. And yeah. I wonder if, um, This change? Are you still streaming there, Mr. Uh, Pixel? So annoying sometimes. There we go. Um, check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Weird. You can see like a echo or something. Okay, it's because the mic has a high input sensitivity. I know that's why I've got this gate on though, see, right? So it only picks up what's in this range of decibels. So here, this, this line here um, keeps it from hearing quieter decibels. For example, way down here is my... Uh, Way down there is my, f it's too high. Okay. So down here, you can hear the uh, fan in the background. Now you can't hear the fan. Too high, meaning you're hearing too much noise or, or what is it's too high mean? Are you saying it's too high because you're looking at my threshold bar? Or you're just saying it just picks up too much sound? Popping is way less when it's down. Oh, okay. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to restart my Ableton. Okay, how does this sound? Check, 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 check. Okay, so threshold, 34.6. I guess what I've got to do is... 
I don't know. I, I guess that's as good as it's going to get. Most third-party mic programs can mess with the stream. Yeah, true. I don't, I don't know. I hope this sounds uh, as good as it used to. But since I've moved everything into my computer room, like, so I have a second bedroom. Wow, it sounds like my, um, it looks like I'm, like, maxing out my, uh, blah, 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 decibels or input volume or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so I got a second bedroom in my apartment, which is where my computer towers always were. So I was streaming on the other side of a wall in my living room, but... After a year of that, I, I was like, okay, this is just silly. It, it will just take tuning and maybe even finding another program. Well, does it still sound bad? Is it still popping and clicking? I don't know why it would. I reset my settings to what they used to be. Anyways, so I've moved everything into that second. It's Okay, it's still popping and clicking. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. This is exactly the way it used to be. Hold on a second. This is exactly the way it used to be back in the day. And I never had problems before, so I don't know why. I don't know why I'm having problems now. Master out. What is this? Master in. I wonder if that's better. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you. Loud. Is it quiet now, though? That's just making it loud. Okay. Okay, what about now? Is it quiet again? It is quiet. Too quiet? Is it popping? Like, more quiet. You want it more quiet? Okay, what about there? I wonder if I have to change this, the output. Master out, I guess. Left was fine. It was with the right. Okay. Okay, test, test, test. Well, thanks for helping with this anyways. See, I'm red barring over here on the left. I mean, that can't be a good sign. Maybe it's, that means it's bringing in too much. I don't know. I don't know how I can really help. Well, I mean, just what what you did was good. I mean, getting to hear what's going on, that helps so much. But, uh, yeah, I really do have to maybe just sit down one night with a voice recorder on. And um, why are you using this program to begin with? Uh, I've, been, I've always used Ableton. So back in the day when my stream sounded incredible and awesome, this is what I was using with the exact same settings. So I don't know why it's so broken now, which is what's pissing me off so much. Because now that I'm in this room with my towers, you can hear the fans in behind, which is extremely annoying. Um, but I have the gate up, which is always how it was actually. I haven't changed that setting. So it shouldn't hear the fans. Um, and uh, yeah, so there was a guy with a YouTube video about how to set up a gate so that you could have ambient sound and stuff and it wouldn't come through the mic. By the way, it's still a little quiet. Okay, hold on a second. I'm just going to restart. Check, check, check. Okay, so this was at minus 2.41, and this was at minus 6.02. Hopefully that sounds better. Then the next question is, is it popping? That is good, right? Anyways, so back then, I was playing. The reason I started playing in my living room in the first place is because I wanted to use the surround sound of my entertainment system. 
I mean, you don't go buy Dolby 5.1 and then hook a computer up to it just so you can play through a headset. That doesn't make any sense. And so I played with the 5.1 and my 46 inch TV at 1080p that I thought, yeah, this would be great. It's just still pops, but it's not crazy popping. Okay. Well, I'll look into that. Um, and, uh, yeah. So then after a while, I realized during PUBG that I was losing most of my gunfights where it seemed like it, sh it was like an even beginning. And I thought I must be hundreds of milliseconds behind my enemies and it must have something to do with the, um, what is it called? Input lag in my TV. And sure enough, TVs aren't made for gaming. They're made to, you know, show an image from a Blu-ray disc. So it doesn't matter how long it takes for the information to get there, as long as it's in sync with your sound system, which uh, your DVD player, Blu-ray player will do automatically. So I got a gaming monitor, hooked that up and out there, and I had switched over to headset uh, at the same time. Uh, but I was still in a separate room from my towers, but now I've moved everything in here, so I don't know, man. Anyways, back to the comic. The KO-14's mission is twofold. First, to follow the Benedict to the alien homeworld and gather biological data on the life form. Second, to inhibit the Benedict's crew from retrieving a viable test subject. Captain Massey has been given carte blanche toward this end, meaning he can kill everyone. In the interim, our bionational research team continues its examination of the human specimen salvaged from the eject, ejected pilot's pod of the cargo vessel junket. Someone's out there, mother. Cargo Express identification. James Lukowski, Section 10B611, Pilot, Classification 2S. Human specimen's pod had been damaged, causing loss of atmosphere, but vital signs were somehow preserved by the infusion of the alien life form. After retrieval, both specimens were brought to Bionational's Houston Labs for analysis. Something touches me, mother. I can feel it in my arms, my chest. Oh my gosh, he's got a face hugger on him. Preliminary reports from our weapons specialists are encouraging. Full-scale testing should commence within the next 48 hours. We shall provide daily updates for all members of the Bionational Board. How's life going anyways, Mr. Pixel? Protect me, Mother. Don't let them hurt me, please. So maybe there's like a psychic sort of link to the alien queens when you've, I don't know, had this contact? I'm not sure. Creepy. Bug hunt. Letters to the editor. I'll just scroll so that if anyone wants to read that, they can pause. All right. Looks like we're getting to the home world. Ooh. Here comes the action. Busy with school. Haven't been able to play stream a lot. You know what, man? That's for the best. I took a, I took a long year long break from video games. It was awesome. I got so much done in life. In fact, if you go to hehasanswers.com, you'll see the PDF there of the book I've been writing, and it's like 70% done. It's over 1,000 pages, but it is like uh, just an incredible journey through the evidence of God's existence that uh, should help people's faith and should make people who are scoffers and doubters take pause and humbly uh, <laughs> seek God. And uh, so, yeah, when it's done, it's going to be really, really great. I can't wait. And uh, even in this last... And then I took like another month off uh, around December of last year because I was like tr just trying to get life back to normal after five years of not cleaning my apartment while I wrote that book and worked. It's crazy. Dr. Rainier, start wherever you'd like. Okay, okay. I'm with my mother. We're still in LA. Your mother died several years ago? Cancer. We're taking the Wilshire tube into downtown LA. Right then, I knew I was dreaming. I've never seen an empty tube. All of a sudden, we hear this loud scraping sound. Scraping? How do you mean? Like, like fingernails ripping fabric. Then, suddenly, the car stops. Something was trying to get in. I pounded on the door, hoping someone would hear. Then, these things started to 
claw into the car. I ran to my mother and she made this sick bubbling sound deep in her chest. It was just a stupid nightmare, right? What happened after the television came on? First, there was the only distortion, but then something started to... Oh, I wonder if... Uh, oh, it's the people that are watching that dude's show about the alien. Creepy. Come at me from inside the screen. Okay, so they're having some sort of group hypnosis hysteria uh, because they're all people who are... Um, susceptible to hypnosis and whatever. And that's what's going on while this guy plays the image of the alien. I must have dozed off. The next thing I knew, the stewardess was standing next to me. I remember thinking that she reminded me of someone. Who? It's going to sound funny, but my mother, all at once, these teeth, they, it ripped right through her chest. Like I'd been inside her the whole time. I kept screaming for my mommy, but she wasn't there. Just the monster coming closer and closer. Oh, you know what? Now I remember, like, reading the comics back in the day. Uh, I think it's a, in a series after this, there was this guy talking about mother. They worshipped the queen alien. It's disgusting. It was shiny and wet, and I think it wanted to kill me. End transcript. Copy 2382, Dr. Wade's Law, Orona. Civilian advisor, CMC. Fascinating. All these reports are from within a 50-mile radius. Yes, Dr. Arona. And I've got a dozen more just the same. Every patient rates sensitive on the Cryer scale and double figures on the Emerson. The descriptions of the creatures, they're consistent, identical. Some of the technicians on the psych side did a workup postulating different modes of communication for the alien creatures. The most plausible was telepathy, or at least some form of telepathy. <laughs> Oh, well, that's interesting. You think they're trying to communicate with us? Unlikely. The data we've collected doesn't suggest higher intelligence. The sightings are random and confined to a specific geographic area. Very odd. We've kept the existence of the alien creatures completely secret. All of a sudden, we are expansion and wave of spontaneous telepathic events. Question is why? And why now? And why Earth? Mother, where are you? Oh, jeez. It hurts all over. I'm scared. He's coming out of it. BP is slightly elevated. Heart rate and respiration normal. I show no movement from the parasite. It appears dormant. Your name is James Lukowski. You are captain of the space freighter Junket. You are on Earth in a quarantine medical facility. If you're feeling up to it, we'll release you from the straps. Why... Aren't I dead? Please, could someone tell me what happened? I want to see my wife, please. He looks normal enough. Heck, he's worth billions. I wish everyone were that normal. The creature has lodged itself in the subject's digestive system, drawing relatively insignificant amounts of blood and fluids. Nevertheless, it is growing at an incredible rate. What about the pilot? Does he know? There's been some discussion on that point. Ethical. Questions have been raised regarding the, pr 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 uh, the propriety of informing the subject, considering the ultimate prognosis. And you? What do you think, Biner? We have a unique opportunity to study the development of an utterly new alien life form. Reactions of the host could be important. Of course, in that case, he would have to know. Then tell him. I had Levitz drop some hints at the San Diego Arms Fair, and everyone's excited. Major Kwan's begging for a 60-day exclusive. Kwan can kiss my butt. We're setting conditions, not the Chinese. So when does Biner, so when does Biner think we'll have something to show? A couple of days? 72 hours? Tops? Jeez, you've been staring at me for hours. Is that all you want to do? I'm sorry, does it bother you? No, I mean, it's your money. My money. Oh, gross. Guy prostitute with a pregnant woman? Women are blessed. Oh my gosh, this is the, this is the uh, false preacher. They know how it feels to be joined with another life, to share themselves selflessly. It must be wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. 
My back's killing me. Come on, babe, you're making me feel weird. Are you sure you don't want something? Yes, I want to know how it feels. Oh, gross. Salvier, where the heck have you been? Studying. Yeah, well, study this. A couple of government suits dropped by the shop today. Seems they're real interested in Channel 2393. What did you tell them? I didn't tell them crap. If they knew I was hooking up illegals, they'd pull my license and I'd lose all my military contracts. Then everything is fine. No, everything is not fine. Look, I've been hooking up your, you religious psych jobs for three years now, and I've never had problems with the FCC, cops, or anybody else. Until now. Darn it, Salvier, what the heck is that thing? The Messiah. The Immaculate Incubation. Ugh, I, I don't even want to say the word. You're out of your mind. I'm through, Salvier. I'm not risking. Whoosh. Ugh, are you crazy? Risk? You talk to me of risk? You're nothing. I'm nothing. Only vessels here to serve the true Messiah. Glorified in having been chosen for the ultimate communion. Don't be afraid of him. Believe in him. We will continue the message and find others who've seen the vision. Look at him. Like, was this guy a janitor on one of the, uh... One of the corporate head offices reading secret material about the alien missions or something? No! The broadcast will continue. Don't be afraid of the government. Be afraid of me! How long until the next communication from the Benedict? Another hour. We're zeroed on their local antenna. We should be able to get a clear transmission. Good. Keep your distance. They're loaded with DS sensors. Don't want them to spot us until after we go through gravity burn. Okay, one more time. The government ship has five basic access ports, two fore, two aft, and the loading bay. We'll be going in through the number one aft lock. Ugh. You'll all have low-level blasters. Be careful. Ka-chink. Military ships are armored, but an unlucky shot could still rupture the hull. Save the guns for soft targets, internal systems, electronics, crew. We'll hold the crew prisoner until we reach the alien homeworld. Once we're through, we will purge the military computers and destroy the ship. No survivors, of course. I pulled Newt out of the spare cargo lock 12 hours after liftoff. It looked like the drugs were wearing off, though it was hard to tell. I felt sorry for her. Stevens took it about as well as expected. I told the base commander you were unreliable, Hicks, but this, this is insanity. What the hell are you thinking? Did you think at all? I offer no excuses, sir. I did what? No excuses. Oh, that's very manly. Maybe you'd try an explanation. If not for me, then for the men. Explain why you brought extra weight onto a carefully balanced gravity drive ship. It's not his fault. He did it for me. Oh, I understand now. It's not his fault. You forced him to stow you aboard. Forced him to jeopardize the mission. Leave her out of it. It's my responsibility, and the gravity balance is nominal. I dumped 104 pounds of that raspberry-flavored crap from the ship's stores just before we took off. I like that raspberry-flavored crap. Shut up, Isley. I should lock you. I should lock your butt up and keep you there until the court-martial. I'm sure the military court would be interested in hearing how a top-secret military vessel left base without a thorough inspection by the commanding officer, sir. But the mission comes ahead of my personal desires. Okay. Oh, whoops. But the mission comes ahead of my, per of my personal desires, okay? The girl is your responsibility, Hicks. We'll settle the rest when we return to Earth. If we return to Earth. Man, I've never seen Steven so pissed. I think there's something seriously wrong with our Corporal Hicks. But what the heck? The girl's cute. Benson, you in? Nah, I've got to walk through my... I've got to walk through. Keep my seat warm. This is Benson. I'm in Section A for Apple. Five. No visible hold stress proceeding into, into A for Apple. Six. Who the heck talks like this? Benedict to KO14. Prepare for transmission of updated telemetry data. Oh, this guy's a spy. What the heck? Our ETA with the homeworld is... What the heck is this? Do the others know?
What the? Somebody's opening the number four airlock. Click. No, oh, no. Who the heck's down there? The area should be clear. Cripes, we're a couple of hours away from gravity burn. No, oh. Jeez, somebody's gone outside. Get Stevens and Hicks up here now. Give me a picture, darn it. Oh. What's the problem? Who the heck is that? We're not sure. He's not responding. Oh, Darn. The pain. Like a scream inside me. Oh, gosh. I want to live. For Pete's sake, hold him down. I'm trying. We need some tranks in here now. I want to live. Oh, Ugh. It's the subject. He's broken away and... He's got a Uzi, I guess. I don't know. The guards are dead. I want to kill more. I can hear alarms. Don't care. How come this didn't happen to Kane in the movie Alien? Can't care. Gotta get outside. I want to feel the sun. Hot outside. Wet with humidity. Get out of the car. Oh my gosh. Leather seats, smooth, soft. I smell hot ozone as I accelerate. <laughs> Death is all around me. I feel utterly alive. Maybe, maybe it's just he went crazy. Maybe it's got nothing to do with the alien inside of him. The expressway cuts directly through the city. I'm thinking of my wife. Oh, maybe, um... It's because, maybe it's because they told him he has an alien inside and he's going to die when it pops out his chest. They try to stop me, but it isn't impossible. <laughs> they don't understand. This is my time. I cannot be denied. <laughs> I see orange flames. There's a burst of heat. I want them to suffer. The building is an old friend. Real flowers out front. They smell like expensive perfume. I enter the elevator. The buttons are smooth, cool, plastic. The burnished metal plate glows in the dim green light. So close, I ache for her touch. Bam, bam, bam. I guess I could have done this. James? We touch for the first time in my life. I understand. Oh, we touch for the first time in my life. I understand perfection. Get him! The moment ends. I hold my wife's hands. It's war. It is warm. We have an we have nowhere to go. I aim for the sun. The heat is a blanket. I force the ship to fly higher. The control panel glows a hundred colors. I know this because I am there. I turn towards my wife. She is beautiful. My gosh, the sun. It's so bright. What the heck? Oh gosh, no! For Pete's sake, hold him down. I'm trying. We need some tranks in here now. Watch it. He's reaching for your gun. Darn it. Get him down. Oh, jeez. It's, it's coming out. My goodness. His vital signs are going off the scale. I'm going in. I want to see the birth firsthand. I'd feel better if you waited with me. There's nothing to worry about. I just want to be part of it. What's taking so long? It's hard to tell. He seems to be fighting it. Urgh! What do you mean, fighting it? Can we hurt it? We don't know. Nobody knows. Stand away, for goodness sake. What the heck do you think you're doing? This entire project depends on you. You... You want it? Urgh! Oh, he ripped his... Okay. Urgh! You want it? You can have it. Ah, yeah. ah, hard air. Ah, you stupid son of a... You're exposing the entire lab. Ah, help me. Systems breach. Jeez, that's impossible. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. 
Order! I think I can hit it if it just holds. No! And save it. Too important. Horner would understand. We need the alien alive. Continue next issue. These letters are so fun to read, but um, just, we just don't have time, guys. We just don't have time. There's only so much time in a day. You guys can go back if you want. Oh, there's the queen mom. The queen mother. Oh. Your name is Mark. Under the provisions of the Baines Amendment, you've been declared a terrorist. I, I can't feel anything. You have no rights under American law. Any means may be used to elicit information up to and including physical torture. Spinal blocks. We've deadened everything from the neck down. Oh, that's okay. I can't, I can't feel anything. Spinal blocks. We've deadened everything from the neck down. Don't worry. It's not permanent yet. Let's make it simple. Tell us about the church. Tell us their plans for the creatures. If I don't have told you, they'll make me one of them. I'm told you're a video technician. Good with your hands. That's why I'm going to start with your legs. We used to do this without anesthesia, but there were terrible complications from the shock. The leftist papers accuse us of using Kirkland probes to actually read minds. I wish it were that easy. I personally don't care for probes or psychoactives. Too much distortion. Uh, what are you doing? It's what you're doing. Tell us what you saw. Who was involved? And then we won't have to hurt you. Oh, he's got a mirror. Look in the mirror. You won't actually feel anything until we stop the spinal. And then you'll warm up slowly. What are you going to do? What are you doing to me? After that, if you're still not cooperative, we'll find something else to play with. I didn't bother with editing Dr. Arona. I thought you'd want to see it immediately. Almost nine hours. I was quite impressed. How long? Oh. How long before he talked? Almost nine hours. I was quite impressed. <coughs> I confessed all my crimes. I'm guilty. What does it matter? I've seen the incubation. I've seen Sylvanus's God. You can't begin to understand its power. It'd be easier for you if I were part of Sylvanus's conspiracy. At least then you'd have a reason, someone to blame. Maris, we just got a corporate on the work link. Are you available? Corporate scale? I'll make time. It's the sheer coincidence of it that terrifies you. The real world's like that. Random, chaotic, casual. There's no such thing as chance. Uh, Maris, video link. We had a call about some crystal switching problems. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Is that Maris or Mark? I think it's Maris. I remember thinking just another job. Oh, I remember thinking just another job. The regular tech's out sick. One of those mutated flu viruses. Oh, video link's here. Should I send him down? You do much crystal work? Not recently. Corporate designates have a lock on the best jobs. When you're freelance, it's almost all private or military. Routine. Otherwise, I'll check back in a half hour or so. Switchers in the back, any questions? Beat me. Thanks. One of the logic chips had crunched. I had it out in under a minute. I was good with my hands. That's when I saw them. Cheap lead shunts, hands soldered into the optics line. About as sophisticated as an old-style fuse. Security types like them because they're physical and temporary. Of course, that makes them easy to circumvent. Don't know why I burned them. Curiosity. Maybe the challenge. My goodness. They're real. Hello again, it's Astro. Just checking in. The others have forgotten your sacrifice. But I remember. Our, I remember. I always will. We captured it while it fed on you. Oh. Here's Horner, I guess. Seemed to need that primitive animal kinship. While it acclimated, er, acclimated to the artificial environment, you were its home. You gave it your body, your life. At least you didn't die in vain. 
You would have been thrilled with our progress. Originally, of course, we'd merely planned to study the specimen while awaiting the return of the K-104. For once, we had a bit of luck. You see, the creature was captured. we captured was a queen. And that changed things. Its birthing process is utterly parathogenic, par uh, parthenogenic, with none of the primitive ritual associated with sexual reproduction. The austerity of it all is quite breathtaking. It seems to live for only one purpose, to reproduce. What's a queen without her subjects? The marketing people want, want us to hold off on further testing until they can put together a promotional campaign for the November WEA tech conference. Even with this, the secrecy, Bionational's investment rating has doubled on the international boards. Our organic weapons program is going to revolutionize the industry. I'm so happy for you. For us. I was standing at one of the viewports, staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like glowing white neon. I was trying to remember my parents. All I could remember was the blood. It's... it's an optical illusion. What? The stars. Gravity drive so powerful we're bending the light. You get used to it. Beats the heck out of hibernation. The Marines were wary of Captain Stevens in the aftermath of Private Benson's death. Stevens insisted it was an accident, closing the investigation before it started. I could understand that attitude from Stevens, but what about Hicks? Hello again. Mind if I sit here? No. I mean, it's all right. In the midst of this, what did Butler see in me? Corporal Hicks must think a lot of you to stow you on board. Stevens is going to have his butt once we're back on Earth. Hicks and I understand each other. Yeah, I'll bet you understand each other real well. Knock it off easily. Couldn't he find someone of his own age to, uh, I said knock it off! Kingling. No one had ever shown an interest in me before. At first it didn't make any sense. This is where we stow the blasters and the rest of the portable gear here. Let me, uh, don't touch me! It's okay. My fault. I'm sorry. I'm just... Ever been around uh, these things before? Once. When I was little. Really? Must have run with a rough crowd. Then I realized he was like me. He knew how it felt to be alone. What made you join the, the, the Marines? Don't you miss your family? The Marines are my family. Listen. About Corporal Hicks. If there's something between... Shh. Tell me, tell me why you hit Easley back in the com commissary. Easley's got a big mouth. He had no right to say what he did. And I was afraid it might be true. Hicks gave me a schedule of token administrative duties to keep me occupied during the voyage. Hatred of the aliens burned inside him like an open flame. It was all that sustained him. He'd lost all sense of compassion. He shrugged off Benson's death as if it were trivial, an annoyance. I shared his hatred of the aliens, but suddenly our bitter quest seemed empty, almost ugly. Private Butler, you have business at this station? Hicks, it was only... Get back to the other soldier, now. What's wrong with you? Butler was... I saw what he was doing. It's going to stop, even if I have to confine both of you to your quarters. My goodness, you're jealous. I'm not a child anymore. Butler's my friend. Maybe my only friend. I won't let you ruin that. We found an unused storage unit behind the engine compartment and met as often as we could. It was all so new to me. Sometimes I feel so frightened, like I'm still eight years old. That's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm frightened of the way I feel about you. I wonder how that will change when we reach the homeworld. Maybe Hicks had been waiting, hating so long... Yo, what's up, Sacred? Thanks for the follow. Hopefully my sound and, and uh, vocals are coming through good and not popping too much. I'm going to try and fix it after this. Thanks. If you've forgotten what it was like to care about someone, I, I've never done this before. Neither have I. What? Maybe I'd been locked away so long I'd never had the chance to try. We stood at the viewport staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like bands of glowing white neon. The aliens destroyed, the aliens destroyed my life once. 
I couldn't stop him then, but I could stop it from happening again. <laughs> the Bionational people never suspected. I replaced the shunts, pretended nothing had happened, all the time knowing that I had to find Sauvier. Maris, got another call for you. Main feed's gone down at the... Get somebody else. Open up, you crazy bugger. Let me in. Pum, 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 pum. Welcome. I am Dee Dee. We are... I know who you are. Salvier's vision had tapped into something primal, uncontrollable. As his message spread, the devoted sought him out, provided for him. Welcome, brother. Please join us in our... Where the heck is he? Salve, darn you, I've seen it. It's real. We know. Salvier's congregation gathered closer, watching in utter silence. I told them what I had seen. There was no surprise. It was as if they were expecting me. It took me a moment to truly understand. The vision had overwhelmed them, where I was seeing monsters. Hey, sacred. Thanks for stopping by. They were seeing salvation. Salvation only comes from one name, and it's not the alien. Everything quiet? Got a glitch in one of the infrareds, but maintenance said they'd... Wait a minute. Motion sensors just picked her up. Should I activate the grid? Maybe one of the executives forgot to punch her in. Try a long-range retinal and a photo ID search. I'm not getting anything. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm picking up the movement all over the, sh the site. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry, man. Long comic. This is, uh, Drero is, uh, my PUBG buddy. I'll be right back. I need a drink. Uh-oh, look, she's got a suicide vest on. Okay, hold on after this. I'm picking up movement all over the site. Turn on all the hot guns and the automatics. Burn up everything on the perimeter. What's that she's wearing on her? <laughs> or, or rather, Kawam! Be right back. Okay. Salvier's congregation poured into the Bionational complex. I was stunned by their power. I want everybody on ha on hard fire standby. Locked and loaded. Nobody gets in. Who in the heck could have? Guns didn't frighten them. Death didn't frighten them. Nothing mattered but the cause. It wasn't that they weren't feeling the pain, they just didn't care. Keep firing, keep firing. We need more men, we can't. Yeah! She's just grabbing his face with her hands. Oof, scary. Salvia wanted me to see everything. Even in the midst of the blood and death, he felt it important that I believe. The creature watched passively, hovering protectively over its brood. Hang on. We have come to consummate our love, to purge the vision from our minds, to be one with you. Take me. Take. Oh, my gosh. Take. Me. It burst out in a glistening blur, viscous tendrils of fluid fluttering behind it like some obscene afterbirth. I could see his mouth twisted in pain as the creature attached itself, and he started to scream. For the first time, Salvia understood the true meaning of sacrifice. <laughs> well, my goodness, they're taking her. <laughs> please, take me, please. <laughs> they're trying to destroy her. 
Sir, we're under some sort of attack. I've lost contact with ground floor security. I think we should notify the... No, outsiders. We handle this in-house. Savier's acolytes dragged their infected brethren outside, making room for the others. I saw dozens take the spore. They were all her children now. Oh my gosh. Cult that's cultists for you. Killers! Murderers! The Queen's mine! <laughs> I heard gunfire outside the chamber. Suddenly the alien screamed. It was the cry of a mother at the death of her child. I broke away from Savier's men and staggered blindly through the nest. The life form patents belong here. Oh, the life form patents belong here. We developed it. We nurtured it. Oh, this must be the scientist. <laughs> there are too many of them. We can't possibly. Mother of. <laughs> You, you don't understand. I'd never hurt you. Horner's dead, and all I have left of him. You have to understand. I love you. I only want the best for you. I don't remember much after that. Security police quarantined the building. They must have found me inside. I just can't understand why. Why me? Oh my gosh, it makes sense now. She did it, that thing. I've been part of it all along. L hooking up Salve, burning the security stops. <laughs> Maybe it goes back even further. Birth, school. Oh, okay, so this co-scientist leading the whole experimental charge, he's the guy that allowed Salve to get an image of the alien in the first place to get cultists to later on sacrifice themselves to um, to the queen. Wow, crazy, creepy. It wasn't Salve's, uh, it wasn't Salve's conspiracy. It was hers. I was just another soldier, another sacrifice. Oh goodness, please, I'm scared of dying. I wanna live, I want to. That's enough. What did you do with him? Organ banks taking what they can, what they can use. Eyes, skin, what's left of his stomach. They'll burn the rest. We're wasting time. We still don't know where the fanatics are hiding. According to bio-national documentation, alien gestation takes anywhere from 72 hours to a week or more. Wow, see, I knew it. I've always known this is how long it takes for gestation. Yet you see movies like Alien vs. Predator, the first one that took place in the, in the uh, Antarctic or whatever. And the aliens are popping up within like 45 minutes. It was so stupid. They, they totally ruined the whole mythos of the alien thing with how quick how quick the aliens uh, came out and how quick they got big. It's just so bad. If any of the newborn escape, if any of them are queens, God help us all. Need a drink. <sighs> As the ships approached the aliens' homeworld, I was overwhelmed by a hideous premonition of death. Butler and I spent every spare moment together. I knew he shared my apprehensions. There was an air of desperation to our encounters, as if we didn't dare waste an instant. Oh, hang on a second. I just got to look ahead here. Yeah, there's a sex scene. Sorry, guys. We made love that final day, surrounded by the bleak gray metal of the ship's hulls. And for the first time since Altron, I cried. I remember thinking how frail we were next to our machines. Aww. Poetic. Yeah, sorry, I, uh, I, I don't, um, I don't, I, I don't want to have nudity and stuff. Even drawing, drawing nudity, really sexual stuff on uh, my stream. I, I don't agree with it. That kind of stuff is supposed to be reserved for a man and a wife, and that's it. And uh, our sick world has made it so it's no longer sacred. Son of a... Captain Stevens, there's something out there. Perhaps it's debris of some kind. No way, sir. It's changing course, following us. It's some sort of ship. I'll sound... sound I'll, I'll sound general quarter. <laughs> no, not quite yet. 
This is Stevens. Everything is set. Prepare for docking. Oh my gosh, Stevens himself is the one who's the the friggin' um bad guy of this whole story. Why does it do that? Hmm. Massey here. Excellent. Excellent. Be see you shortly. What in the heck? <laughs> Something hit us. Jeez, code five alert. We're under attack. That's impossible. It must be some kind of drill, an accident. You're safe here, Newt. Wait for me. I love you. Oh, I love you, and I'll be back. Anybody know what's happening? Your guess is as good as mine. Nobody can find Stevens or Hicks. What about Meeker? She had communications duty. I haven't seen her since she... Shoot, someone's pulled the loader mechanism. This thing's useless. This one, too. They've all been zeroed. This is some kind of setup. This is Captain Stevens. I want all crew to report to the loading bay immediately. I suppose you're going to kill the rest of them, like you killed Benson. What happened? He catch you transmitting to these bastards? Get off. Oh, I suppose you're going to kill the rest of them, like you killed Benson. What happened? He catch you transmitting to these buggers? Get off it, Hicks. You don't care about the damn Marines any more than I do. All you care about are your precious aliens. That's it. Nice and easy. Double check the ship's complement. Make sure we have everyone. Your Marines are safe for now, Corporal Hicks. We still need an alien specimen, and they seem to thrive on humans. Humans? You think you can use the Marines for bait? Jeez, didn't they? That's enough. I don't like you, Stevens. I don't mind greedy men. But I can't count on its traitors, even when they're on my side. Never know when they might turn. Wait, Massey, you don't understand. You need me. <laughs> Not anymore. Prepare the dropship for landing. We're going hunting. <gasps> it's so funny. These letters to the editor are like the equivalent of like YouTube comments now, you know? And YouTube comments, it's instantaneous and everyone gets a say. Coming this spring. Predator. This was probably Concrete Jungle. It was horrible. I already read through it if you guys want to watch that stream. I've also got a, uh, a blog now called geekyandgodly.blogspot.com. And it's just a letter N in the center. Geeky and Godly. Oh, but yeah. You can go there and follow the links or just go on my Twitch VODs or my YouTube VODs. Oh my gosh, someone was an android. For one brief moment I'd found love. One of Hicks grunts, a marine named Butler. What is it about life that as soon as you find something good, it's taken away from you? I could feel the panic rise in my chest, choking, claustrophobic. My first instinct was to hide, just like Asheron, just like Earth. That's what the enemy depends on. Human, alien, they rely on that fear to endure. No! <laughs> They don't understand fear. They don't understand anything beyond their own existence. Oh, it explained the resilience of the creatures, like the alien. They don't understand fear. They don't understand anything beyond their own existence. I knew I'd, I would have to become like them to survive. Okay. It had been four hours since we'd been boarded. Who the heck were they? Soldiers? Mercenaries? This was easier than I'd hoped. Did you double check the inboard roster? Stevens aced Benson and Meeker and dumped the bodies before we docked. The rest of the complement is accounted for. It didn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered to them. No wonder Stevens chewed my butt over packing plasma rifles. He was afraid we'd use them against you. I still can't figure where the corporation found the balls to intercept a government ship on a classified mission. I think you'll find the corporation capable of almost anything. We still believe in free enterprise. Capitalism. And I'm afraid your government wants to keep the alien life form for itself. My government? You make it so... Oh, my government? You make it sound like the corporation is an independent state. Jeez, those things destroyed Asheron. Think what they could do to Earth. I have. We're breeding them. You'll stay with me aboard the Benedict. Your men seem to respect you. I might be able to use that. 
You've already got those things on earth. Why not just kill us and be done with it? Oh, but you're going to die. Rest assured of that. But I'm sure you understand the call of science. Oops. We're charged with investigating the home world before returning to earth. Never know what you might find if their home world follows traditional patterns. There's probably some sort of ecological balance. Predator, prey, like Earth, like you and me. The alien is a remarkable life form, but it may not be the dominant species on its home world. A corporation like BioNational succeeds by staying one step in front of the competition. In five years, the alien will be obsolete. Passe. We'll need to find newer, superior biological weapons. We're fishing. Your Marines are bait. We're picking up some burn on the outer hole. Ground scanners are starting to clear. Jeez, Massey, are you seeing this? Yeah, put down near the formation and dispatch the floaters. Make sure all the data recorders are up. They're going to want this on disk. Then drop the Marines and enjoy the show. The atmosphere is marginal, but there are only enough masks for us, he, uh, for us good guys. Heck, heck though, you're rough, tough Marines. You can handle it. I still don't like this. Come on, you read the documentation. The adults are a bugger, but they're ground-based. Once the crab-like things attach to a host, they go dormant. We pick them up, we go home, no problem. Yeah, right, no problem. I knew I would have to kill them. The ducks worm through the ship, separated by an intricate network of automatic interior doors. The aliens use similar tunnels to attack us on Asheron. Somebody pulled the Lotus from the Marines' blasters. Probably that piece of garbage Stevens. I saw what was left of him spattered down in the loading bay. Saved me the trouble. I couldn't imagine Stevens actually jettisoning the Lotus. He was too prudent for that. The intruders were calm, confident, that they were in complete control. Despite Ripley's warnings, Hicks and his marines made a similar mistake on Asheron. It was a matter of perception. The aliens would have understood. The Benedict didn't belong to those buggers in the loading bay. It belonged to me. Does this make any sense to you? Bio-national, the government? We're all supposed to be on the same side. There are no sides anymore, just money. Oh, my back. And we're expendable. Oh, got a little message. We got third. Still rating. It's a six part comic. I think I'm on six. Nope, five. Ouch. Oh, uh, hey. hey. Cripes, I'm getting bare nominals on the atmosphere, and the grunts are hardly affected. How many are there? There's six episodes to this uh, to this first story of uh, Hicks and Newt and Butler going to the home world. And if I remember correctly, the next series is really gorgeous art. It's all like uh, watercolor and stuff. And um, it's, I think it's a four-part series, but yeah. Because I had one of those issues when I was a kid. They're acting like it's another damn boot camp. Maybe they believe all that. Maybe they believe all that. We're the best recruiting crap. But they don't look so mean from here. And heck, we got the be the best seats in the house. Oh my gosh, an a lizard thing can see them. My gosh, it's it's fused out of bone, petrified tissue. Anything left after the aliens? Come on, for Pete's sake, stay together. Don't think about the enemy. Think about survival. Survival. That's funny, man. Where the heck are they? Why don't they attack? What are they doing just walking in there? I guess they have no choice if these guys have guns aimed at them. Hold it. Are you crazy? Back off. There's something inside. Something moving. But it's not attacking. Why are we still alive? Something's wrong. Something's wrong with this entire mission. Growl! Missy, we're under attack! Growl! Regroup! Get back to the... 
Sky's full of them! Jeez, Messi, we need... <laughs> Lucane, darn it, Lucane, move into... Can't... Can't get any range, can't... I see smoke, Hage is down. <laughs> back off, back off! Go, go, go! Lucane and Hage are both dead, those things are... You son of a... Massey, we need help. Oh my gosh. This is where they breed. Where they... Whoosh, oh. oh, geez, they're everywhere. I think I see an opening. We might... Darn, what's that noise? Sounds like gunfire. Ugh. Let's get the let's get the guns from the lander. I felt the ship lurch when the lander separated, but they left with them. I could feel it. The same way I could still feel his skin. So gentle, so warm. No, forget Butler. Forget everything good. The aliens didn't need love, loneliness, fear. The concepts were meaningless. They only knew they only knew death. They kept things simple. The loader mechanism is a magazine? What? They're all around us! Jeez, we're surrounded! Can barely breathe, Ma Massey! Do, do something! Yeah. <laughs> That's the sound of uh, hydrating during combat. Screw it! The Marines are good uh, getting away from the hive. Overpowering my people. I may have underestimated you. Click. The scientists will raise a fuss over the destruction of the inboard documentation, but they'll get over it. What about your men? What about them? My principal objective was to keep the government from securing an alien specimen. Mission accomplished. Drop it, you son of a bitch. Well, we have seemed to have missed one. What are you, ship's mascot? Release Hicks now. She should have shot already. The alien would have attacked. What was wrong with me? Why couldn't I fire? I, I said release him. You're very pretty. You can't be one of these hard-ass marines. I'll bet you've never even fired one of those. The shoot him, Newt. Don't, don't come any closer. You wouldn't want to kill me, honey. How could you live with yourself murdering another human being? It wasn't fair. I wanted to be just like them. Stay back. Whoa. God help me. I was only human. Hurrah! You stupid. Try to use a weapon against me? Cripes. <laughs> ah! I don't need weapons. I could open your throat with my fingers. Feel the blood spray down my arms. But you're not worth the effort. You're nothing. A distraction. Yeah, remind me of my wife. No! No, run! I'm through running! I was wrong. I wasn't like the alien. Nothing truly human could stand such emptiness. You don't scare me. Nothing scares me. Shoot, you don't even have the strength to... I thought of Butler. I thought of our love. Wrong! Can't you stop it? There's no time, darn it. Butler, this is new. You have to get away from the lander now. <laughs> Down. Out of all the controls, everything. We'll have to transfer the Benedict's nukes to their lander and set them ourselves. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to finish it. Butler, listen to me. Oh, Butler, listen to me. We're going to use the intruder's lander to recover you. Find somewhere safe to wait for... We can't wait. We managed to salvage the blasters and ammunition from the lander. We're going back to the hive. What? The hive? You you can't. Those things. We have to. We already lost Stevens. Those men in the lander. We can't let anyone else die. I thought Stevens was the bad guy. What is this? Some test of marine courage? Stevens was a traitor. Yeah, exactly. What an idiot. Those men were going to kill you. Please, I'm begging you. Like, did they not understand what was going on? They were totally sold out. Wait for me. You're wasting time. Forget them. They were dead before the mission began. 
I, I can't explain it. We have to go back. I love you, Newt. And I'm a moron. We launched Massey's lantern and began the slow descent to the alien's home world. I could see Butler over the ship's monitors. Oh. I could see Butler over the ship's monitors. His face was reduced to an abstract blur, tiny electric pulses of light and color. Hicks ignores the screens, lost in his dreams of vengeance. At least he still had that. I had nothing. There were no dreams left for me. <laughs> Short burst, darn it, conserve your fire. Motion sensors are off the scale. They're all over us. <laughs> Just the stark reality of the alien. <laughs> Move it! The stark reality of death. I'm reading plus two in a rounds, Butler. We're running out of time. They're converging ahead as if they're swarming over some. Oh my gosh! In here now. Oh look, it's an android. Where'd that just come from? Please k k keep them away. The rest are dead. Burn these aliens and then back out. <laughs> Maybe one or two of us will actually make it in, uh, in one piece. <laughs> Hicks dropped the lander just outside the alien hive. Sand and dust danced around the ship like some mocking ethereal smoke. Like phosphorescent swirls of color flickering across the lander's forward monitor. Darn it, Butler, don't fall back. Just keep moving. I think it knew. I think it wanted to teach me a lesson about the futility of love, the horror of trust. I'll cover. I could see it all. Oh, I see. God, no! Jeez, he's, he's still alive. Please. That's why he went back. He was an android, and his directive was to protect the humans and save them, even at the cost of his own life. Ah! Newt, stop it! Damn it, Newt, I tried to keep you away from him. From all of them! Oh my gosh, they were all androids. That's why there was an android head a few frames back. Why do you think they went back for those buggers in the hive? Their principal function is to preserve life. Human life. Ah! They were engineered just for this mission, spent their whole lives locked inside that marine compound waiting for this moment. They're cost-efficient and expendable. You and me, Stevens, we were the only humans on board. There were, in there were interaction problems with earlier models. Humans just didn't like them, so these prototypes were designed to socialize. They eat like us, talk like us. Darn programmers were almost too clever. The androids developed sensitivities. There were questions about their emotional stability, how they'd react to the truth. So we treated them as equals, played along with the deception. Stevens was trying to tell those buggers just before they killed him. Aliens need living tissue to incubate. Bait. That's a laugh. Why didn't you tell me? Jeez, Newt, you weren't supposed to fall in love with them. Couldn't jeopardize the mission just for you. You're worse than any of them. You're dead inside. Just like the aliens, like that son of a bugger I shot. To, to think I wanted to be like you. No. Get inside and lock down. Hey. Hex the hatch. Hex the hatch is sealed. Everyone's aboard. Forget the aliens. We have to launch. Not until I set the warhead. Oh my gosh, they're outside, crawling across the hall. They want in. Oh my gosh. Shoot, they've cut the external feed. Externals control the telemetry and launch functions. Looks like nobody's going anywhere. Don't, don't look at me. You must have known. How could you, we have... Does it matter? Does anything matter anymore? Just don't leave me. Let me pretend a few more seconds. <laughs> yeah? Come to Papa, you son of a... <sighs> whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Save it for the rest of us. I'll die before I let them touch me again. <sighs> oh! What in... <sighs> Listen, they've stopped. It's impossible. Nothing can stop those things. At least, nothing human. Oh my gosh, it's a space jockey. And he's got phaser things. And he killed them all. Story concludes next issue. Wow. Uh, big reveal here. Uh, according to Prometheus, these things actually weren't aliens with a trunk. They were dudes wearing a space mask with an oxygen tube. Yeah, it is cool. Oh, look, they have a tail. Cute little tail. Uh, I never saw that in the... I guess this is um, poetic... Uh, or I'm sorry, artistic license, right? Because at that point in history, we'd never really seen a space jockey walk around or anything. We'd just seen it lying in that suit on the Leviathan in uh, Alien. And so I guess the artist thought, yeah, maybe they should have a tail. But yeah, no, they're actually humanoid things, according to... Really, Scott in Prometheus. Whoa. Okay. I think I think this is like the one issue I had as a kid. This one right here, because I remember this cover so clearly. Oh no. Oh no, I hope the file wasn't corrupted because I actually lost this drive at one point and I had to try and retrieve the file. Oh, good, part of it works. It had dead eyes, seen and not seen. It had destroyed the aliens, but not for us. Never for us. Why? It didn't speak, but something exploded inside my head, bright like a million suns. Oh, it's telepathic. The image is boiled up from some deeper place, the same plane as primal instinct, hunger, pain, fear. That's how spirits communicate to us, by the way, everyone. Uh, it's like imagery and thoughts, sometimes words that sound like our own internal monologue. That's why it's so easy for us to be deceived. Hatred. Newt, I can see. My name is Rebecca, but everyone calls me Newt. I'm six years old. I live on a world called Asheron. There are 159 of us on the planet. The corporation calls us terraformers. My father calls us pioneers. The corporation had sent us out to investigate some sort of magnetic surge. I can still remember my father's smile, the scent of my mother's perfume. So in the movie Aliens uh, by James Cameron, they actually have a deleted scene at the beginning of the movie where colonists go out to investigate the ship, the, Levo the alien ship where, uh, from the first movie Alien. And the story actually is that Wayland yutani or whatever had sent the colonists there not to actually terraform the planet, but to find the ship. And, uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, anyways. The readings are going off the scale. We must have found the mother load. And you know the rules. We find it, we keep it. My gosh. Uh, hard to believe something this big with this kind of resonance went without being noticed. It's partly sheltered by natural rock formations, and the darned EC sats never worked up to spec. What's it matter? It's ours now. My name's Newt. I, I'm not six years old. Jeez, it was all so long ago. I don't want to remember. Don't make me remember. You kids stay inside. I mean it, no fooling around. You can watch over the monitor, but don't touch. Oh, that's her, the mother. What well, wind's really kicking up. We'll make a quick loop to secure the claim, then head back. I can't stand to see it happen again. My goodness, Russ, it's enormous. Over here, it looks like some sort of gash in the hull. I was only six years old. The discovery of the derelict didn't really mean anything to me. This is incredible. Everything's smooth, almost organic. We had terraformed a barren rock into a viable, life-sustaining planet. We had battled time, space, the elements, and won. We weren't afraid. And... In here! That came later. Maybe that thing in the derelict shared our blind arrogance until the aliens killed it. As you can see, chest burster. It somehow knew that I had seen the wreckage. We shared a grotesque form of empathy. 
Newt, what's doing you? Uh, it wants me to know. I could only pick out bits and pieces like someone blinking channels on a video. He described a ship, some kind of mission. The eggs, oh gosh, the eggs. Don't make me see it again. My name is Newt. I'm six years old. My father knelt in front of the pods. I could see him over the tractor's monitor. I could see the excitement in his eyes. Jeez, Ann, I see something moving. I think they're still alive. Oh! Daddy, no! Daddy, no! The pilot aboard the cargo vessel lost control of his ship. Its ship. It should have drifted forever. It should have carried the alien things into the hell of deep space. <laughs> Instead, it crashed into the world that man would christen Asheron and the spore survivor. They waited patiently for new blood. They found it in the colonists. My parents. Your friend? I could hear a high-pitched whine in my ears, like some distant horrible scream. This antenna's shot. We'll have to bypass it and run the directionals through the aft system. My mind was slipping away. When you're young, you can't understand evil. It's an intangible thing, like the air, the sky, and just as pervasive. I wanted to believe there was something better, that there was some kind of hope. I, it watched us with its dead eyes, and I felt a chill. It had come to the alien homeworld out of hate. It had rescued us in the name of revenge. Perhaps evil is the only universal truth. That's not true. I was only double-A alpha log on Arona. Uh, I've lost track of time since the bio-national attack of barricaded. I've barricaded myself in my office to give me time to prepare this final report. Evidently, the alien queen is able to communicate in some subconscious fashion with other species. In human beings, these dis disseminations manifest themselves in the form of pattern nightmares. The dreams were lure. Oh my gosh, look at all the people. The cultists with the facehuggers on them. Just hanging out like they just drank the Kool-Aid at Jim Jones's Jonestown. At first, we thought we'd be able to contain the spore. Infestation seemed limited to a narrow geographic range. <laughs> ah! And yet, for every cluster we found, there were ten more just like it. Name's Ostro. Looks like he was some sort of big shot with Bionational. Burn the son of a gun. The alien subconscious bait transcended class and political boundaries. We found hives everywhere. Oh, wow. Oh, this is why there's a series called Earth War, all about Earth being overrun by the aliens. That was a, That's a good series, too, if I remember correctly from being a kid. My tastes have definitely matured. Come on, move it! I want a perimeter around the house, and I want air support now! With each new discovery, our hope of destroying the creatures before they entered the civilian population faded. <laughs> However, we still considered containment an option. In studying the bionational files, we learned their queen had just stated a number of weeks prior to maturation. Using their experiment as a baseline, I assume we still had time before any new queens would become viable. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. Just sitting there in a mansion. <laughs> Perhaps our worst mistake was underestimating the sheer instinctual cunning of the creatures. We didn't see the underlying pattern behind their evolutionary process. The way every facet of their existence was geared toward propagation... The queens matured at whatever speed their survival dictated. <laughs> we had assumed the gestation period was time for the alien embryo to feed and grow. But it was more than that. It was an opportunity for the unknown host to spread its spore to other sites. Interesting. So they only pop out while they try and pop out when it's got people around, I guess. There was a geometric perfection to the infestations. Each queen would lay still more queens, and with every generation, the spore became more enriched, entrenched, more... <laughs> ah, at last. The civilian authority was weak in the face of the devastation. When the generals finally staged their coup, it seemed almost welcome. Nah, you can't do this. This is against the... Shut up. The military created testing centers where physicians checked civilians for signs of the alien infection. At first, the tests were voluntary. 
Within days, that changed. There were rumors the military was using the pretext of alien infection to eliminate political dissidents, the poor, the disaffected. Hey, look, they still listen to Megadeth in the year 2200. <laughs> As if such petty rivalries even mattered. Vital services, you know, it's funny. Uh, oh, they eliminate the political dissidents who are, that's what the dash means, the poor, the disaffected. Um, you know, meanwhile, you look at the communist regime and they killed political geniuses and anyone who spoke out against them. It wasn't just the poor. And it was also sometimes the very powerful. Anyways, yeah, like look at the bourgeoisie. Uh, or what were they called? No. Am I thinking something else? Am I thinking the French Revolution? Anyways, whatever. They, they, they killed the wealthy too. Vital services, water, electricity began to fail. So we've heard of infestations in Europe, Australia. The seed is growing with remarkable speed. From all of this, I've come to understand something about humanity. Man is an animal driven by animal passions. Civilization is a pathetic charade of manners predicated on a tissue-thin veil of lies. In the future, if there is a future, historians may blame our failures on some external cause. The aliens, bionational, fate. I know the truth. Those things didn't destroy us. We did. Well, that's definitely true. Every society apart from God collapses. Uh, we see that with Rome, and we're seeing that with our own Western civilization today. <laughs> They'll, they'll be here soon. The military has organized off-world ships to evacuate vital personnel to the outer colonies, mainly their own precious hides. I've chosen to remain behind. We made the mistake of perceiving the aliens as sentient warriors. I finally really, I realized the truth. They're a disease, a cancer. It'll be just a moment, Colonel. The seals have to be burned before the outer door. Just do it. My, my mother died of cancer. Odd how I've been thinking of her. Years ago, following surgery, doctors would apply radiation to the affected area in hope of destroying all traces of the scourge. I'm showing green on 90% of the warheads. The burst should vaporize the mountain. Prevailing winds will do the rest. It sounds so primitive, but there are times when the old ways are most effective. I've timed the detonation to coincide with the military's escape. They think they can destroy the creatures. They think someday they'll be able to come back to their world. There's something pathetic about the struggle. My, the struggle. My only regret is that I won't survive to see them proven wrong. Where's the period here? Anyways, need a drink. Oh. I take pride in my pragmatism. I realize this transmission is pointless. I doubt if the long-range relay stations are even operational. Still, if anyone has actually seen this, I just I. <sighs> Doesn't really matter, does it? I've never actually. Fired one of these. I feel rather. <sighs> oh gosh, no. Oh, foolish. He definitely did not say that after pulling the trigger. Damn them. Damn them all to hell. They thought they could breed the monsters. Jeez, the monsters were breeding us. We've got to go back to those things. To spit and polish. To spit and polish buggers. I'm not sure which is worse. It's over, Newt. We're helpless. You're right. We're helpless. It's not. Oh. Again, the message of the alien savior. Destroying the aliens had been an all-consuming passion, yet there was little sense of achievement as we left at rendezvous with the Benedict. Hicks went through the motions because the motions were all we had left. The other watched and approved, and in the end, revenge was just another chemical reaction like all things in life. One instant, the life... <sighs> I was there. The next instant, it was gone. <sighs> Finally, Hicks knew he had to go back. There simply wasn't anything else. Course entered, gravity drive up. Let's get the heck out of here. We were nothing when we left Earth. We'd been sent to find specimens. We were returning with salvation. The word seemed hollow, ridiculous. Where would I find my salvation? Butler... Don't, please. Are you, are you all right? Please, do. don't look at me. I, I can't. I need to know. I need to know if, if what we had was real. 
that is hard. It's not knowing if uh, feelings someone had were real or facade. When that thing tore into me, I remember thinking how much I loved you. Then I saw what was left, and suddenly I knew. Oh, we all knew. Nick said it was just programming, part of some socialization process. You believed you were human because it was easier, but that doesn't explain what happened between us. It can't. No. I know how to, I know how to type message, guys. I'm just typing fast. It can't. I, I touched him. His skin was warm, soft. He was alive. No, he's an android. Maybe all life is like Hicks revenge, chemical, random, hate, death, love, all meaningless outside some larger context. It always comes back to our arrogance. The scientists want to draw a line between man and his machines. Hey, how's it going, fiery biscuit? Thanks for stopping by. Same when I try to type fast. Exactly. It's no big deal. Fiery Biscuit, I apologize if there's some popping crackling with my vocals. I, I'm going to try and fix that. I don't know why it's been doing that. What made their hate more alive than their creation's love? Oh, but what did it matter? Butler cared for me. Not like Hicks. Not like Earth's doctors. What made their hate more alive than their creation's love? Time passed quickly. For the first time since Asheron, I felt a sense of calm. Earth drifted below us like some bright toy, and at long last we were home. We haven't got much time. The creatures have breached the Galveston security line. I thought Arona said, Arona's dead! Happened weeks ago. We found what was left of him inside the main bio lab. Sure, we're picking up two ships on the DS scanner. One's emitting a standard Type 4 beacon. The other's unidentified. Type 4 asking permission to land. We've cannibalized most of the transco computers, but all managed to pull a pre pre uh, preliminary ID. The Benedict. My goodness, Stephen Ship. Grant permission for landing. I'll meet them at the pad personally. Wind and rain battered the ship as we settled on the landing platform. It was almost as if nature itself were rebelling against the military's plan. The rain reminded me of Asheron, reminded me of my innocence. Take the synthetics to the rehab. We'll deal with them later. One of the bionational executives told us about Stevens after all the crap went down. You won't have to worry about those buggers anymore. Darn it, listen to me. Arona transmitted a message about the detonation just before he died. You have to stop it. There may be another way. We've suspected the existence of other sentient beings since the Nostromo mission doesn't change things. The aliens have won, Corporal. Basic military tactics. When you're outgunned, you retreat and leave nothing for your enemy. Jeez, haven't you heard anything I've said? There's still a chance if, you de if you'll deal with the, the... They don't want to stop it. What? It's only a matter of time before the aliens overrun us. We've got to deal with the reality of the situation. Arona understood. The alien attack is not evil. It's opportunity. Earth's been on the brink of destruction for decades. There's no discipline, no order. The aliens only exacerbated the situation. It would have come to this sooner or later. It's a chance to clean the slate. A chance to start again. After a few years, when it's over, the survivors can return and terraform Earth into something beautiful again. Oh my gosh. This is, this is sort of like the plan of the elitist. Corona understood. The aliens have given us a chance to rediscover ourselves. It's a good thing. For the first time since Ashron, I laughed. I laughed because words had lost their meaning, because that son of a gun, Arona, had been right. The aliens didn't destroy us. We did. Sir, there's been a breach of the southern perimeter. Our spotters have seen hundreds of the... Lock down the ships and prepare for launch. It's time. And what about us? You did what you thought was right. The time for military protocol and play inquiries are long past. You're like everyone else still on Earth. Unnecessary. <laughs> Back away, report to the pad for launch. Unnecessary. Just let it end the way it should have ended on Ashron for both of us. I'm not giving those aliens the pleasure and neither are you. I smuggled you on board the Benedict, and if I've learned one thing about the military, it's this. They never learn. Wait. 
We don't have time for this, Newt. This is where they took Butler. I... Oh, gosh. What have they done? They destroyed the others. Took what they could salvage. I... I didn't think you'd come back. Half these ships are automated cargo carriers. No crew. If we gotta identify a specific... That's it. Deck four. Keep firing! Keep firing! Can't let them get to the pad! We can't let them... Boom, boom. Oh. I'm still not sure what Hicks was thinking as we climbed aboard the cargo ship. Perhaps he wasn't thinking at all, just reacting as the soldier in him took over. Darn it, hurry! Or maybe after all the death and pain, something finally sparked inside him. Something precious. We've got lucky mo we've got lucky most of these cargo jo uh, we got lucky most of these cargo jobs have been retrofitted for total auto operation. This one still has some manual controls. Fully pressurized atmospheres, nominal, makes sense. Ship's register specifies organic cargo. Heck, it's Noah's happy little ark. His will to live. The aliens have entered the facility. Prepare the ships for launch on my command. Sir, some of the men are still on deck making final. I'm proud of every one of them. Now prepare for launch or I'll have you shot. I could hear gunfire and screams as the aliens advance on our ship. The sounds of a planet dying. The automatic launch sequences locked and the whine of the ship's engines drowned out the horror below. We were leaving Earth to the aliens in Rona's opportunity. I suppose I should have cried, felt something for those we left behind, but I'd run out of tears long ago. And then it spoke to me. Something exploded bright like a million suns. I can see. Newt, what's wrong? It, it had changed since the homeworld. It took me a moment to fully comprehend. Ah! It understood about Arona. It knew his twisted plan. We thought it shared our thirst for vengeance. We led it to the earth in the mistaken belief it might want to help us. How could we have been so blind? It shared so many of our mercurial human emotions. Hate, anger, the desire to conquer. It no longer cared about the aliens. Interest had shifted. So the soldiers assumed they would return one day and terraform Earth for themselves. It would watch. It would be waiting for them. It just wanted me to know. The cargo vessel's navigation computers were locked onto a deep space trajectory. The gravity drive pulsed like a living thing, propelling us across billions of miles of space. Hicks finally had his revenge, but he found no satisfaction in it. When it began, he blamed his misery on the aliens. Now all he could blame was himself. I was standing at one of the viewports, staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like glowing white neon. But this time it was different. I wasn't alone anymore. And maybe finally that was all that mattered. Because <laughs> there's a giant alien with me. <laughs> Wow. So as you can see, this style of art, I believe, is in the next issue. Yeah, there it is. Wow. I had, th I had this comic. All right, guys. Mm. Well, that's it, friends. That was our series of... Whoa! That was our series of comics for the night. Ah, uh, the sort of sequel to Aliens the movie. And uh yeah, it was um pretty good, not a bad story. I mean bad in terms of poorly contrived. Um definitely had some gross ideas. I it's 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 just sad watching like the perverse um blasphem blasphemous um I don't know, usurping and like the idea that people would chase after uh an alien as if it was God, but you know, the reality is uh, all the time we chase after things, people, hobbies, whatever, and they take the place of God. So don't let that happen because God loves you and uh, he's definitely worth giving everything up for, which is what he calls us to. But of course we can have hobbies. I don't think there's anything wrong with me, um, you know, chilling and reading a comic book. Anyways, if you want to know more about God, and I hope you do, please go check out my website, he has answers.com. Um, it's still under construction. It's super rough, super rugged looking, but you can ask God a question there and he will answer if you're humble enough to listen. He'll answer through his word. I guarantee it because I know he's spoken to me many times. Um, 
And, uh, and then for you, those of you who doubt his existence and don't believe the Bible is actually how he speaks to people, you can read the book that, uh, that I've put together that proves that God exists and that the Bible is completely supernatural and it can only have been put together by an infinite being such as God outside of time. So have a great night. I'm going to turn off my stream and then turn it on again for PUBG. Um, yeah, and that's that. Peace.